Hey guys, welcome to our weekly news show here at Backstage of Millionaires. I'm Caleb, your host, and Indian startups are in space. Bengaluru-based space tech startup Pixel sent their first ever satellite into space on April 1st aboard a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. So this satellite is called Shakuntala, and it weighs 15 kilos, and it's a technology demonstrator satellite. So what does that mean? Well, the purpose of launching the satellite is for Pixel to demonstrate to their customers that their satellites actually can do what they say they can do. So of course, the next Next question is, what do these satellites do? Well, this one is a hyperspectral imaging satellite, which means that it takes extremely detailed images of Earth from space, and this data can be used by Pixel's customers for a number of crucial processes like monitoring mines, detecting leaks in oil and gas pipelines, analyzing levels of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium in soil, and more. Now, some people are wondering why Pixel chose to launch their first satellite with an American rocket instead of an Indian rocket, like for example with ISRO. Well, this is where things start to get a little bit complicated. I know that earlier I mentioned that this is Pixel's first ever satellite that's been launched into space, but this is actually their second technology demonstrator satellite. The first one was called Anand, and it was supposed to be launched in early 2021 aboard ISRO's PSLV rocket, but because of COVID, these plans were delayed. And this is why Pixel decided to launch their second satellite with SpaceX. In the future, Pixel is planning to launch an entire constellation of these satellites, with the total number being 36 eventually, to cover the entire Earth and offer constant updates to their customers. All right, next up in the news, the C CCI, the Competition Commission of India, has officially launched an investigation into both Zomato and Swiggy for alleged anti-competitive behavior. So last year in 2021, the National Restaurants Association of India, which represents over 500,000 restaurants across the country, filed a complaint with the Competition Commission of India, flagging anti-competitive practices used by food delivery platforms like Zomato and Swiggy, including unfair pricing, data masking, and preferential treatment. Now, in their responses to this complaint, both Swiggy and Zomato denied these allegations, but the CCI has decided to proceed with an investigation anyways. And according to a statement from the CCI, the commission is of the view that there exists a prima facie case with respect to the conduct of Zomato and Swiggy, which requires an investigation by the director general. The two key issues that the CCI is keen to investigate are unfair pricing and price parity agreements, which don't allow restaurants to maintain lower prices on other food aggregation platforms, and also the preferential treatment that is often given to restaurants and cloud kitchen brands that are owned by these food aggregation platforms. All right, next up in the news, after laying off between 35 and 40 employees, OK Credit has now shut down their e-commerce enablement platform, OK Shop. So this platform allowed Kirana stores and small business owners to set up an online storefront, create a product catalog, and share their inventory directly with customers. Now, I think one thing that's interesting here is that OK Credit aren't the only ones exiting this market. Last year in November, one of their competitors, Kadabook, had also shut down a similar app called My Store. Despite pouring millions of dollars into these business lines and accumulating hundreds of thousands of users, both of these startups failed to monetize their platforms. OK Credit only managed to make 3 dollars 0.79 lakh rupees in revenue in the financial year of 2021 while spending 114.6 crore rupees. Kada Book, on the other hand, brought in 19.1 crore rupees in revenue in the same time period, but they spent 108 crore rupees to make that revenue. All right, next up, this video is sponsored by Zoho Payroll. Are you somebody who runs a startup or a small business? Or maybe you're the person who handles the payroll for employees at a large organization. If that's you, then chances are you're either using spreadsheets to manually handle payroll, or maybe you're using some clunky software that was made for the early 2000s. Managing payroll for your employees is a critical task, from calculating their salaries, doing their taxes, generating pay slips, and keeping up with Indian payroll laws. And if you make even a single mistake, then you'll end up losing the trust of that employee, and you'll also have to go through the entire Entire process again, which takes a lot of time. So this is where Zoho Payroll comes in. It's an online payroll software built specifically for Indian businesses of all shapes and sizes. Using this software, you can automate all of these processes and digitize everything, right from onboarding a new employee to taking care of all of your payroll related tasks, all from a single platform. And it's super easy and intuitive to use as well. Oh, and if you're wondering how to integrate all of the data that you have lying around in your spreadsheets, all you need to do is import that spreadsheet data into Zoho Payroll 
payroll with the click of a button and you're good to go. And one other thing that's worth mentioning here is that Zoho Payroll lets your employees access their salary slips, view their salary structure, and upload reimbursement receipts all from their self-service portal. This means that Zoho Payroll is the only payroll software that your business will ever need. And remember here too that Zoho is the original Indian SaaS company that's been powering businesses for the last 25 years. They know exactly what your business needs. That's why more than 7.5 crore people across more than 180 countries are using their products. So if this sounds like something that you need or you just want to try it out, then make sure to click on the link in the pinned comment or description down below to get a 30-day free trial to Zoho Payroll. And thanks to Zoho for sponsoring this video. All right, moving on to some acquisition news now. Co-living startup Stanza Living has acquired IoT-based solutions provider Singularity Automation. After this acquisition, which is an all-cash deal, Singularity Automation's founders and its core team will be joining Stanza Living to help them build new IoT-based products and to customize existing products like smart door locks, secure access controllers, and smart energy meters. This IoT technology is going to strengthen Stanza Living's tech, bring in more efficiency, and offer a seamless experience for their customers. All right, moving on to some funding news now. This is actually the biggest funding round so far of 2022, overtaking Baidu's $800 million million dollar funding round last month. We have Verse Innovation, the parent company of Daily Hunt, and also short video app Josh, raising $805 million in a funding round led by the Canada Pension Plan Investment Board at a $5 billion valuation, which is up from their $3 billion valuation eight months back. So Verse Innovation is one of the leading players in India when it comes to digital content. Daily Hunt alone has over 350 million users and serves news content in 15 Indian languages. And then their short video app, Josh, which was launched back in 2020, already has more than 150 million users. Verse Innovation is going to be using these funds to strengthen their AI and ML capabilities to compete with local and global competitors like ShareChat, Moj, Instagram, and YouTube. Besides this, they're also looking to add live commerce features on their platform too, and to delve into the world of Web3 in the coming future, although we don't have a lot of details yet. All right, next up in the funding news, digital supply chain startup WizFreight has raised $36.2 million in a funding round led by Tiger Global Management. So WizFreight enables global importers and exporters to digitally book and manage their cross-border shipments. They offer solutions like live tracking, dynamic pricing, digital payments, and optimizing routes. They have a network of over 200 carriers and vendors, enabling more than 1,500 enterprises. And these customers include the likes of Adani, Mahindra, Tata, Aditya Birla, and IT. The startup says that they've been growing at a rate of 20% month on month over the last 12 months, and they're already running a profitable business. They're going to be using these funds to open two new R&D centers in Bengaluru and Singapore to strengthen their AI and ML, their blockchain and their IoT capabilities, and to launch operations in 15 countries in Southeast Asia, the Middle East, and Africa. All right, next up in the funding news, co-working space provider IndieCube has raised $30 million. They've raised these funds from their promoters, Westbridge Capital, and angel investor Ashish Gupta who is one of the co-founders of Helion Ventures and Jungly. IndieCube offers personalized workspaces for solopreneurs, startups, and even large enterprises. They have more than 4.5 million square feet of office space spread out across 60 properties in eight cities. And they're going to be using these funds to expand their office space footprint to over 10 million square feet by adding properties across more than 15 tier two cities over the next two years. All right, next up in the funding news, B2B fintech startup Ncash has raised $20 million in a funding round led by Ascent Capital. So Ncash serves micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises and businesses that aren't served by larger banks and neobanks. They do this by helping them to manage their finances through solutions like automating their receivables process, digitizing payables, and issuing corporate cards for tracking employees' corporate spending. Ncash is already being used by more than 70,000 businesses and has issued over 500,000 corporate cards. They're going to be using these funds to invest in the development of their product, to strengthen their technology platform, and to expand their presence across the Middle East, North Africa, and Southeast Asia. All right, next up in the funding news, normally we would move into our rapid funding news item segment now, but we've actually decided that this probably isn't the right format for our rapid funding news item segment. It just feels like the visuals at this point in the video are very text heavy. There's a lot of information that we're sort of visually blasting at you, and I'm not saying a whole lot, and so we realized that maybe this is just information that is better suited to a written format. And so we've decided to start piloting piloting a newsletter. And you can check this newsletter out. It's, again, just a pilot for now, but we will be adding to it, hopefully in the future, if we see a positive response from you guys. You can check the newsletter out on our Twitter, 
bio. There's going to be a link in our Twitter bio. And by the way, our Twitter is BW Millionaires. And you can either sign up to get the newsletter sent to you on your email inbox, or I think you can also get it sent directly to you on Twitter if you're an active Twitter user. And so that's where the rapid funding news item segment is going to be moving to and probably in the future some other news items as well as we sort of uh, see this newsletter evolve over time. But that is all the startup news that I have for you guys this week. I really hope you enjoyed the video. I hope that you learned something from it. And big thanks now to all of our Backstage with Millionaires members, our unicorns, our decacorns, and our hecticorns. And of course, also big thanks to this week's sponsor, Zoho Payroll. And remember guys, you can check out the link in the description and pin comment down below to get a 30-day free trial of Zoho Payroll. All right, thank you so much for watching this episode of Backstage with Millionaires, and I will see you in the next one.